Hello, this is Joe Ray. This is my first video log uh, for my global learning project for TE150. In this specific video log, I'm going to be describing my own cultural background and how that has shaped my beliefs and my behaviors and sort of my values on education. And after that, I'm going to describe my plan for my future interactions with a student of another culture and how their own cultural beliefs have done the same for them. Hopping right into it, I would say I belong to a distinctly Midwestern American culture. Well, I say culture, but in reality, I should say subculture, considering the fact that prefacing the term American culture with a specific region denotes a subtle difference, which in reality is actually present. The uh, way I've come to perceive my own Midwestern culture would be in several key points. Firstly, the differences between our social and economic beliefs as compared with other subcultures in America. While older generations within the Midwest may hold more traditional or conservative social and economic values, younger generations, such as myself, a millennial, generally appear to hold more liberally based values. I don't know necessarily what causes this, but that's kind of a, I've noticed, a pretty big tendency throughout the entirety of America is that the younger generation seems much more liberally based, so it seems much more liberally leaning than older generations. There's some sort of generational gap here. I, I'm not 100% sure what causes that, but we just seem to live in two different times. My next point is our specific practices and dialect. Much of Midwestern culture stems from our location in the more northern area of the continental United States. Despite this, in regard to our practices and dialect, we actually are more of a mixed bag, you know, of Northern American urban and Southern American agricultural. I'm not 100% sure if everyone understands what I mean by that, but let's just say that where I live in Lansing, Michigan, is a much more urban town than 10 minutes west or even 30 minutes and on south. Those are much more agriculturally based towns so I can honestly say we're a very, very mixed bag. However, saying that poses many more questions and calls upon many further subcultures. However, in an attempt to keep this video log more concise and to limit some confusion, I will continue to simply define myself as Midwestern. Adding to my previous point, however, I do consider myself as a part of North American urban half of the Midwestern culture. As I mentioned previously, I did grow up in a city. Not a very big city, but a city nonetheless. This leads really into my topic of discussion. How has this cultural background affected my values, my beliefs, and my behaviors towards education? Well, from my personal experience, Midwestern and, in a larger scale, the entirety of American culture itself has provided me with a very no-nonsense perspective on education. The ideal image of education provided me as a collection of cultural inputs is one of moving grade to grade to grade through a public primary education, taking as many honors levels and pre-college, such as AP or dual enrollment classes, in preparation for college itself. And then after that, your college education is supposed to be slightly more open-ended, more things can, you know, branch off, with some more personally driven twists and turns via changing majors, experimenting with classes, etc., etc. 
Despite this open-endedness, though, college education is supposed to be taken even more seriously and is meant to prepare me for the real world. Midwestern educational values seem pretty straightforward, right? Uh, that doesn't mean it's all the same, though. It's completely possible and, in fact, highly probable that my cultural views towards education completely differ and may even contrast with the views of others. And that's exactly what I want to discover through the course of this project. And even further, how our values contrast and how we can use these differences to better ourselves in an increasingly global economy. Now that we've prefaced the project, it's time for the initial plan. So for the remainder of the Global Learning Project, I plan on having my cultural interactions with Miss Ava Lian an international student from China who is roommates with a friend of mine that I have made here at Michigan State. The cultural difference between us is based in the fact that we almost literally come from opposite sides of the planet, which I personally hope leads to some interesting interactions. I don't know, I'm interested to see where it goes. There's actually very minimal amounts of difficulty with this project in regards to how it could take me out of my comfort zone. See, my high school was actually named the fifth most diverse high school in the state. We actually had 32 countries represented in our school. And I actually became friends with many of our international students. Despite this, I actually only ever genuinely had close relations with one Chinese student as he was on my swim team for the two years I was a captain. So I'm always on the lookout for a fresh perspective, and sometimes a swap of gender can lead to a completely different perspective. And that's what I hope to get out of my interactions with uh, Miss Leanne. The final portion of this plan consists of the tentative ideas for actual scheduled interactions, which at this moment are actually to be determined and will be discussed with Miss Leanne depending on her personal comfort level with said interactions. Despite that, the interactions will be planned for maximum cultural education for both myself and her. On that note, thank you very much for sticking through this first part of this project. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment what you'd like to see me do next. See you in the next video.